Hi everyone, welcome, welcome back. Organizing Hire, providing productivity tips, tools, and resources to help you go through life calmer, happier, more relaxed while you're getting things done. If you're into that kind of stuff, consider subscribing, that way you don't miss out on future videos. Does thinking about all of the things that you have to do on your to-do list stress you out? Or are you thinking, gosh, I wish I weren't so lazy. I feel like I should be getting more things done. If either of those two things sounds like you, stay tuned because I have some suggestions for ways that you can deal with those voices in your head related to your productivity and organization. I'm going to share four things that people often say to themselves that, in my opinion, are just not true. The first lie we tell ourselves is we have to accomplish everything that's on our to-do list. I don't know about you, but through school, I was an achiever. I got good grades and I was encouraged to do that, got attention and appreciation, and I very quickly connected achievement with appreciation, respect, and attention. Unchecked though, that type of relationship can lead to you feeling like you are only worth what you are producing. So if you're telling yourself things like, well, I have to do all of these things, and if I don't, that means there's something wrong with me. Recognize where that messaging comes from and how it can be hindering you and holding you back from being your best self. We're all human beings, we all make mistakes, and we all have limits. So allow yourself to remember that you're not going to accomplish everything on your to-do list. What you're really doing as you're going through your day and you're checking tasks off is you're getting yourself closer to your best self, the version of you that you want to be. And only you get to decide for yourself who that person is and if the things that you're doing are important to you to help you get yourself there. So think about the things that you're doing, the type of person that you want to be, and remember that accomplishing things on your task list is just a part of you getting yourself towards being your best self and that future person that you want to be. But sometimes there are things on your to-do list that aren't as important as other things or your priorities change or your interests shift. So it's okay to say that you're not going to do something and intentionally decide it no longer serves me and I'm gonna to decide to remove that from my to-do list or my task list. Now this works best for tasks that are determined by you and really only impact you. This doesn't work as much with work-related tasks. If you're finding yourself constantly not wanting to do work-related tasks because you're just unmotivated to do those things, you might be feeling some burnout. Check out my other video where I talk about burnout and ways that you can overcome that. Lie number two is, if I just get this planner, if I just use this app, if I just start bullet journaling, or if I just start using sticky notes, then I'll be more productive. If I have this tool, that will make me more productive. That will make me the person I want to be. And if it were that simple, frankly, anyone with a microphone could be Beyonce. It takes skill, practice, and knowing how to use the tools that you have that are gonna make the biggest impact on whether or not they allow you to reach your goals of being more organized and productive. Not only is it helpful to know how to use the tool, but I would argue it's even more important to know why a tool works for you or why a tool does not work for you or probably won't work for you. So for example, I know that having a task list on paper doesn't work for me. I've tried that technique in the past. I end up losing things. I end up with 14 task lists and it just doesn't end up helping me get things done. Whereas an application that's available on my phone, on the web, that makes sure that I have one task list and it goes where I go, wherever I am. If I have an internet connection or I have my phone, then I can get access to my task list and that helps me to be more productive. So things like an agenda or a planner wouldn't work well for me for that reason. I'm also pretty good about losing notebooks and papers too, and I'm very unlikely to lose my phone. So having things digitally is best for me. 
I work in a fast paced environment that's constantly shifting in priorities. So I tried a paper planner for a while and then realized quickly I was always crossing things out because stuff was getting canceled or moved or rescheduled. And visually, I didn't like looking at scribbles all the time or having to have a whiteout on the side. So I just switched to a digital agenda. It doesn't repel me. I enjoy looking at it. And it's a lot easier if something gets canceled or moved to just delete it. It's gone. I have no record of it and I can add something else in its place. And for me, it's just cleaner. That way. So stop and think about the tools that you've tried in the past. What has worked well and why? And what has not worked well and why? This is where that self-reflection is really going to come into play in helping you to figure out what's going to work best for you. Because no one is going to have the answers of what's going to work best for you except for you. I'm just not an organized person. I just, I can't do organization. I just can't do it. I've tried and nothing works. Imagine a toddler learning to walk and after falling for the 50th time says, you know what, I'm just not a walker. Kind of silly, right? So why would we apply that same logic when we're learning a new skill of being organized? It takes years and hours of practice. If you've ever watched a toddler learning to walk, they are so focused and fully concentrated and immersed in that task. They do it all the time, every day. They're not even phased by the fact that they're falling because it's a part of the process. That's the process that you're going to go through as well. And it can be frustrating, I understand. But know that that's not unique to you. Everyone goes through that when they're learning a new skill. What can probably cause some added pressures is when you're trying to figure out how to become more organized and productive, but you've already taken on too much information or taken on too much work. That's a separate video that I can do about how to better manage the workload that you have and be proactive about what you take on. But in this way, just know that surrounding yourself with people who can help guide you, who can help correct your behavior or correct your actions or give you suggestions is really going to be the best way to become more organized and more productive. But keep in mind, it's not about a destination. It's not that one day you're going to wake up and be organized. It's that you're going to wake up and be more organized than you were before. So it's okay to feel like you're not where you want to be. But don't think that that means you will never get there because you will practice, stay focused, stay dedicated and stay encouraged. So seek out new sources, people that can help you to increase your abilities. I'd be honored to be one of those people. Feel free to subscribe. That way you don't miss out on future videos. And the last lie, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, I'll do it the day after tomorrow. Well, tomorrow I'll do it tomorrow or Oh gosh, I'm so lazy. I'm wasting my life because I'm not doing something, but I really don't feel like doing that thing I have to do. Procrastination is a thing, but rest and relaxation are important. They're important parts of overall wellness. So first and foremost, never apologize for taking care of yourself and relaxing. With that being said, you want to think about how your relaxation is impacting you and impacting other people. If you deciding to binge watch an episode on Netflix means that someone else is impacted because of you not getting your work done, that's a problem. And that's potentially damaging the relationship that you have with that person. I'll do a separate video talking about how to not overcommit yourself. That way you're not doing things like letting other people down when you're not accomplishing tasks. But if you're procrastinating on something and it's really only impacting you, you have to stop and think, why does that bother you so much? Sometimes it's because we're not living up to the expectations that we have of ourselves. But think about where some of that messaging comes from. When we're procrastinating, a lot of times it means we're afraid of a task or otherwise repelled by that task. Not necessarily because we don't think we'll enjoy the task, but we have some type of negative emotion associated with that task. Oh gosh, I want to go to the gym, but oh, I'm always so tired when I go. So I'm not going to go to the gym because I don't want to be tired. I'm not tired when I watch Netflix. So let me just sit here and keep watching Netflix. Gosh, I should be working on that paper right now. But if I work on that paper, I'm going to be stressed and I don't want to be stressed. So let me just keep watching these YouTube videos because they don't make me stressed. The problem with that kind of thinking, though, is eventually those tasks 
are going to catch up to you in some way. That paper is going to be due. You're going to have health issues if you're not taking care of your body. So whether you deal with it now or deal with it later, it's going to happen. So the next time you are procrastinating about something, stop and think, what is it about this action that I'm supposed to be doing that I don't want to do? What feelings of discomfort do I believe that I'll experience if I engage in this action? Once you've identified what's repelling you from doing those actions, then you can start to think about ways to overcome that feeling. So maybe if you're worried about being tired for going to the gym, instead of going to the gym, you'll just walk around the block. Yeah, that's pretty simple. I'm not going to be tired. And then by the time you finish walking around the block, you might be surprised that you might be in the mood to go to the gym now. Or if you're really not looking forward to writing that paper, take 30 minutes to just review the requirements for the paper and briefly think about like a topic that you could work on or the outline for that paper. You don't actually have to work on the paper, but that's not really stressful, right? To just come up with a topic or an outline, 30 minutes tops. That motivation piece is what you really want to hone in on, not just beating yourself up about not doing something. Because frankly, that's not going to change anything and it's going to make you feel bad. Your subconscious mind can't tell the difference between a detailed thought and reality. So when you say things like, I'm not an organized person, I just can't get organized, after a while, your body physiologically shifts so that that thing, that thought, becomes a reality. You stop trying to get better, you allow yourself to not improve, and you just become convinced that the state that you're in is the state you will always be in. So instead of saying things like, I'm so lazy, or I wish I could be more productive, or oh, I'm so disorganized, I'm just not an organized person, just say things to yourself like, I'm working to improve my organization skills and productivity level. I'm getting better every day. I'm taking on new tips, tools, and resources, and I'm trying new things. I'm getting closer to becoming the person that I want to be. If you don't like something and you have the power to change it, do that. We are in the age of information. There are thousands, millions of blogs, books, YouTube videos, all about helping you become more organized and productive. I created this channel to help people just like you who are on your journey to becoming a more organized and productive person. So if you've liked this video, if found any parts of it helpful, hit the thumbs up button below. That gives me feedback for what you do and don't like. And subscribe to my channel too. I share stuff like this all the time. My goal really is to help you to become more organized, more productive, and just be happier overall. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.